In this lesson, we will go through everything that you need in order to develop React Native applications locally. So let's go. For any form of React development, including React Native, the first thing that we will need is Node.js, which is pretty easy to install. You simply head over to nodejs.org, go into the download section and use the long-term support version and select the installer for your specific operating system. Running through the installer is pretty easy as well. You click continue, continue, agree to the license agreement, click install, type in your machine password, and this will kick off the installation. And once that completes, you are all done and you can close the installer. To verify that the installation went according to plan, you can open up a new terminal and run a node minus minus version as well as the npm minus minus version to make sure that node and npm, which are two scripts that we will use in this course, are properly installed on your system. And that's it for the Node.js installation. The next thing that we will need is a web development or rather React Native friendly IDE. And we will be using VS Code, which is a free and very popular IDE from Microsoft. Go to code.visualstudio.com, go into the download section and download the package that is relevant for your operating system. On Windows, you would follow the guided steps from the installer and on a Mac, you would extract the zip and move it into your applications folder. Now, one more thing that I definitely recommend setting up is installing code into your path. To do that, open up VS Code and run the command palette using Command Shift P on a Mac or a Control Shift P on a Windows and Linux, and then run the command install code in path. To verify that it correctly got added to the system path, you can open up the terminal and run code minus minus version. Now we will bring up more VS Code tips and tricks throughout the course, but this is enough to get you set up. Now, if you want to build and test your iOS applications locally, you need to be on a Mac. And this gives you access to Xcode, which is Apple's development environment for building native Mac and iOS applications. To install Xcode, open up the Mac App Store and search for Xcode and click the get icon if you have never installed it before, but I have installed it before, so I get the option to download it on this particular Mac. Now this will take a bunch of time to download, but once it is complete, you get the option to open up Xcode. Click open to launch Xcode at least once, and this will help Xcode register itself with the operating system. We won't be playing around with Xcode a lot when working with React Native, but it needs to be present in order for React Native CLI to build your applications for iOS. Now, one more thing that we will need for local iOS development is this thing called CocoaPods, which you can think of as NPM for native iOS modules. To get set up, head on over to CocoaPods.org, go into guides, go into getting started, and then scroll down to the installation step, which gives us the command that we need to run in order to install the CocoaPods command line tools. Open up a new terminal, paste in the command that we just copied, provide our machine password, and this will set up everything that we will need in order to use CocoaPods. And once the installation is complete, we can verify that it was installed correctly by opening up a new terminal and executing the command pod minus minus version. And in order to build and develop Android applications locally, we are going to need the Java Development Kit or the JDK as well as Android Studio. You can get the JDK from oracle.com, go into search and type in JDK and this will take us to the JDK download page. From here, scroll down to the Java Development Kit downloads and download the installer for your particular operating system. I am on an ARM Mac, so that is the installer that I will download and run for my operating system. Run through the guided installer and then you can verify that the JDK was installed correctly by opening up a new terminal and executing the command javac minus minus version. Here javac or java c is actually the java compiler. Now the other thing that we mentioned for android development is the android studio which you can get from developer.android.com. From the top nav you can click on android studio. Click the button that says download android studio. Agree to sell your soul and then download the version that is relevant for your operating system. Now, the first time that you run Android Studio, you will be greeted with an installation wizard. Now, you can pretty much run through the default options. The only thing to be careful about is to make sure that you download the Android SDK as well as some SDK API version and the Android virtual device. After going through the wizard, here are my final installation settings. This will kick off the download and the installation process. And once that completes, you can click finish. With the Android Studio setup visit complete, it takes us to the welcome screen. Now, one final setup that we have to do with Android Studio is to add the installed Android SDK into our system path. How you do that will depend upon a number of factors, including your operating system and your terminal of choice. I am on a Mac using ZSH. So within my ZSH RC, I create a variable for where the Android SDK is installed. Then to my path, I add the Android SDK slash emulator as well as slash platform tools. 
and you can verify that this was set up correctly by opening up the terminal and running one of the command line tools that the Android SDK comes with, for example, ADB minus minus version, where ADB is the Android debug bridge, which is used to debug Android applications. Now, I understand that that was a lot to take in, but hopefully you still got all the necessary information without having to sit there for something like 30 minutes, getting bored out of your mind, watching me go through every single installation step. This particular setup that we have gone through is your best chance for success in the long term. And with this boring stuff out of the way, in the next lesson, you will create and run your first React Native application.